Okay. Um, this is for the digestive tract and uh, all of the epithelial tissues that are associated with uh, epithelial, I mean, with uh, the digestion and uh, from top to bottom on this model. Uh, these areas up here are airways, and so they lead in. This is the tongue, this is the mouth, um, air would come through this. These are all called the pharynx down in here. This is your voice box, and so this opening right here, that's the epiglottis, which is elastic cartilage connective tissue. Uh, this epiglottis would, when you swallow food or liquid, would the tongue would push back and down on it and would seal over this airway. This is the opening to the trachea that we've discussed on the other video. Uh, this opening right here uh, would be from this point down below the cartilage, uh, the opening to the trachea and would be lined with pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelia and would transition all the way to simple squamous through all types of epithelia as it moves through the bronchial tree as we've said in that other video. Um, if you've, you're eating and you push food um, from the mouth um, through mechanical breakdown back into this area right here, this is the esophagus, this tube is the esophagus that leads into the stomach here. Okay, and so this, um, this area right here, these are the folds within the stomach. This tube that leads to it that moves through the diaphragm, the diaphragm would be right here above the liver. And so the tube from the mouth and down into this tube to that point right there would uh, contain non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. Um, and it would be for protection against abrasion. This is where we took cheek cells from we, when we uh, stained them and did a wet mount of those cheek cells. Uh, so this is esophagus and down here at the other end on mo uh, the other mo moist body opening would be uh, lined with non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelia. Once we get into the stomach, uh, we would have simple columnar from this point all the way through the 21 feet of tubing. That is your small intestine and large intestine here. And uh, that tubing would be lined uh, with different modifications throughout with simple columnar epithelia, uh, starting at this point right here at the esophagus where it leads into the stomach all the way down to the uh, sigmoid colon down here. Um, that lining would be, uh, as I said, have modifications throughout. Here it would just have an abundance of goblets trying to protect it from the low pH of the hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid made there. As it moves into the small intestine, which is this part right here, you can see the pancreas adjacent to the small intestine. This would be the pancreatic duct, and the pancreas is the main thing that makes uh, enzymes uh, that are going to break down the food that are released into this area. And the pancreas is unique. It's uh, the most important of these organs because it's both endocrine and exocrine. It releases hormones. Uh, uh, directly into the bloodstream, insulin, for example, to break down uh, and uh, store glucose. And it also has this duct here for exocrine function that releases digestive enzymes. So the pancreas here is glandular. This is the spleen right here. This would be reticular connective tissue. The spleen, uh, bone marrow, and lymph nodes are the location of that tissue. And so the, um, right now we're over here in the left hypochondriac region uh, with the stomach, the, uh, the tail of the pancreas, and the spleen. Um, as we look back to the small intestine, the small intestine would have modifications to the apical surface of its uh, columnar cells, which are for microvilli or a brush border for increased absorption and surface area. Uh, the areas that you see here, this is 21 feet of tubing in an, in an elderly person. It's shorter when it, you have more um, elasticities to it, to it when you're younger, but this entire tube right here leads into over here this lower uh, right inguinal region or iliac region and this would be this, the first part of the large intestine that's ascending colon it would be transverse descending sigmoid and all of this tube would be lined with uh, pseudo uh, sorry with uh, simple columnar epithelia that simple columnar epithelia throughout would see an increase in goblet cells going from the small intestine to the rectum because goblet cells lubricate the tube as the food dries out and as you're absorbing stuff from it. Um, down here, as I said before, just like up here in the esophagus, you would have uh, non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelia for protection against abrasion. Study.